Something's out there. Something that forced its way into our world. Listen up. Come get some. Come on, get some. All right. Come get some. Come get some. Shout out to Sam Raimi. Come get some. Who's Campbell? Aha. Come get some. Yeah. Hold on, taking my fifth hit. Then it's back to the verse quick. Every day is like my birthday. I'm mad gifted. Get your flame blown out if that's just my wishes. Shy vicious, you just a little fierce. Have Brody put the metal to your ears like he trying to pierce. I'm different, far from your average alley cat. The top dog, Princess Staten, you know where I be at. Yeah, I must admit that I can't live with this evil eye. I would rather use my third eye to try and beat you live. It's what I get when it's time to flip to the evil die. It's what they did with you dead after they eat you now. I must admit that I can't live with this evil eye. Would rather use my third eye to try and beat you live. It's what I get when it's time to flip to the evil die. It's what they did with you dead after they eat you. Come. All right. Come. Get some. And there we go. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Episodic Discussion Podcast. Before Drill was about to uh, cut me off and send me off a cliff, but I am your host, Renegade Operative, and we are talking about the Evil Dead franchise. So, um, one of the rare, consistently good horror franchises next to Scream, uh, we're going to get right into it. So, I'm going to introduce Drill first as my guest. Drill, how are you? Good. <laughs> Sorry about the cutoff. I was getting off on a different tangent. I'll just reference it again later once it comes up. Oh, no, no. It is a funny tidbit. No, no, it's fine. I, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but next up is Ren Ren Bin. Hello. How are you? I see you are. I, I did not think that you saw like a huge bulk of the Evil Dead film. So that's going to be like pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. I've seen all of them and I've watched the TV series multiple times. It is one of my favorite horror franchises. Shit, that's the only one that I missed the TV series, but I could contribute no problem. Uh, next up is Brendan. Hello, guys. Your MVP is back, and uh, yeah, I did not finish the um, TV series, so I'm gonna opt down on that one, unfortunately. Next up is Bald Man Brian. Introduce yourself. Sir. <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry. I'm Brian, aka Silver Angel. Uh, this is my second time coming back after a years long hiatus, but it feels good being back again. And he's very, very bald. He could probably use that head as a weapon, but uh, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, Seriously. You get a strike with it, man. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave that where it is. <laughs> And uh, I think that's it, unless I uh, drill. Did I introduce you or no? Yes. Okay, I'm making sure I didn't forget you this time. All right, so we're gonna move to the first question. What is your initial experience with the Evil Dead franchise? I, I guess I'll go first because it's gonna be quick. Honestly, the only way I got into the series is by seeing it on VHS because I literally saw a copy of Evil Dead 2 staring at me in the face when my brother had it and i was just like what the fuck is this movie why is there a skeleton with eyeballs on the cover so i picked it up started watching it and i pretty much enjoyed the movie it was a mixture of like horror and humor which i thought was fantastic and also uh bruce campbell is the main character because i know that's a later question but he really embodied the role and you could see like the fear the paranoia how he's getting like progressively more crazy and that's one of the things that gravitated me towards that movie so i watched the rest of the franchise and i was not disappointed by everything that i saw it was pretty good so that was my initial introduction just looking at a vhs box and saying this looks creepy and fantastic let's do it drill what about you what is your introduction into the evil death franchise well for me i guess it's a bit of a funny story but I think it was like one day when I was uh, browsing the 
the PSN store for movies. You know, remember when PSN had movies back in like 2010? I do, yes. And one of the movie and one of the movies on sale was Army of Darkness, and I said, "Oh, I saw a trailer and said, oh, this looks cool because of the whole medieval setting and fighting like demons and stuff." So I bought it and then watched the whole thing and thought, yeah, hey, I should probably check out the other ones. Of course, starting with Army of Darkness and then finding out the other two are nowhere near as funny and pretty gory was a bit of whiplash, but still, I liked them a lot. Brandon, what about you? How did you get introduced into Evil Dead? Honestly, I don't particularly remember because Evil Dead was not necessarily on my radar compared to like other stuff because I have wacky stories about how I got into the other horror franchise. But Evil Dead, I don't particularly remember. But the first time I experienced it was actually watching the um the remake of Evil Dead or see fourth movie, whatever you want to call it, right? That's my first time experiencing Evil Dead and um I did not watch the later movies until I watched it with you guys actually. But generally speaking, I was familiar with the character Ash because you know, he was an icon after I watched um, that movie, right? And I read the um Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic um way back when. So yeah, that's basically my exposure to the character until I got introduced to the movies watching it with you guys. That was a crazy ass crossover that I'm so mad never happened on film. I'm just putting right? that out there. That's I'm so mad that never happened because that's kinda like canon to the movie. I think that's like a sequel. Uh that comic yeah, book. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a sequel. It blatantly confirms that um Jason's a dead eye. Oh god, no. Jason goes to hell, but oh well, you know what? We'll just move to the next person. So yeah. Rim Rim Ben, what about you? What's your experience? Uh, well, before I say my experience, I would also like to say that I'm very disappointed that that never became a movie because that would be amazing. Um, but my first experience, I think, was actually the TV series because uh, I saw it on Netflix and I was like, hey, this looks like it might be entertaining. Um, and then I ended up watching the original movies and really like them. And Army of Darkness is hands down my favorite. Um, but yeah it just that's how i got into it was actually the tv series and then i mained uh mained ash in dead by daylight for a while because for a while he was the only character that talked uh in dead by daylight and i thought it was absolutely hilarious that they got bruce campbell to do ash's voice for the game as well um and also fun fact i am from the same part of michigan as all of them are I was I, w I was almost curious, but I'm sure the filming location is not the same where they had the house and the cabin. And I was going to ask, like, have you ever been out there before? But I'm pretty sure it's different than what is listed in the movie. But I could be wrong. I believe the first movie was not shot in Michigan. I want to say it was either Tennessee or West Virginia. Because I know it, the takes place, the cabin in the movie is in Tennessee. Even though they're wearing like Michigan State stuff and stuff like that, it takes place in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure some super fans would know, would probably find that no. Dude, the Blair Witch stuff was crazy. People just going out there camping, but that's another story for another day. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I want to say that the cabin actually got torn down, too. I don't believe it exists anymore. Oh, that sucks. Man, it would be cool if someone turned it into, like, a tourist site with, like, a replica Necronomicon and everything. Oh, I would so yeah. go there. That would so that be a vacation I would go on. That could happen, though, boy. Then you're going to have some jackass that would burn into the ground. Like, that one particular house for Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's kind of the boon of tourists. It's like they're gonna fuck with stuff or burn it down, so it's just like that replica is like gone forever, which sucks. But Brian, what about you? What is your experience with Evil Dead? When I first found out about it, it was actually through a parody of another show called Reboot. And in that episode, the younger brother Enzo and the older sister Dot had to go into this game, save the city. And literally the guy they were up against was Ash when he had the chainsaw hand and the shotgun. And, you know, Enzo was Michael Jackson from Thriller. Dot was Elvira. And they had to stop him from getting the book. 
years later when I was in college, I watched the first and the second movie. First movie freaked me out. And I liked it, but I haven't rewatched it since. I did not know there was an Evil Dead reference and reboot of all things, but I do remember they did Mortal Kombat as well, so uh, kind of not too shocked about it, but still, I, I kind of like that. I I think I have to revise what my first exposure to Evil Dead was then, because I watched that and had no idea that's what it was. Well, interesting. Okay. Probably have to go back and watch that episode, too, but... We're going to move on to question number two. Of course, we're talking about the main man. It's not Evil Dead without Ash Williams, who is played by Bruce Campbell. What do you personally think of his character and how he is portrayed? And we're going to go with Brandon first. Uh, how I feel about Ash Williams? Uh, quite frankly, though, he wasn't my cup of tea initially. But over time, he grew on me because I love how different he is, right? On top of him being an established character, because, like, that's not necessarily common in horror, right? But the fact that he, you know, gradually became a different character, because, you know, he's dealing a lot of shit, right? From this common guy to being this practically a slave, not this big badass. Like, I appreciate Ash Williams for that. And the fact that he can crack a smile and um, say a joke all the time, like, he's probably one of the best um, best protagonists ever. Now, as far as Bruce Campbell, like... Did, if he did not play the character, Ash would not be popular. In fact, Evil Dead wouldn't be popular. Because the charisma he um set for the character would be impossible to replace. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, Bruce Campbell is the, the backbone of the series. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I guess I might as well, like, give my answer, but uh i feel the same way it's a thing of the charisma is very like just there uh he goes from you know normal guy on a little vacation with like his crew and everything from school and then it's like this whole situation goes down he's like what the fuck and then all of a sudden slowly but surely the more he survives like the sort of more adept he becomes to the situation uh so you see it in evil dead 2 where he does lose his mind a lot in the beginning but he lost his mind in the first movie and then he starts to you know he cuts off his hand uh you got the fucking signature chainsaw hand the shotgun uh it starts to become you know some symbolized form of how he is and then army of darkness takes it up to 11 and he's like the most coolest character in that movie uh so it is true i i can't see anybody else playing ash but bruce campbell because of how he acts and embodies the character is one of those rare roles where it's like i can't see anybody else playing this dude because he's so good at it at what he does uh this is kind of why I don't know, like, I would want them to try to bring Ash back, but considering that Bruce Campbell said he's retired and he's only doing voice, I just don't see it happening. And so far from the moment of this recording, they haven't touched this character since. So I think they just might leave him alone and focus on, like, new heroines because that's what they've been doing. It's like new fe s new female leads. I would say, like, if they're going to use Ash again, though, it definitely needs to be an animated feature. Because, like, I think that would be the best way to only keep Bruce around as long as possible. Because, you know, he's old now, right? So, at some point, he's going to stop, stop doing um, stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, this would be a great way to not only have him still be the character, right? But do things that they realistically can't do for um, uh, a live-action movie, right? Yeah. So, uh, this would be a net positive for them to do, like, a Netflix series of Evil Dead with um, Ash. Or maybe like Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell can sort of collaborate and see uh, how they formulate their own like male protagonists so far and, and just have them all uh, gather up and maybe they could do like old uh, Bruce Campbell and like an animated feature. That'd be pretty cool because I remember that tease in the remake where he's like at the end and he's old and it's like he's coming back in the sequel and it never sort of happened. Yeah. From what I remember, the idea was they wanted to do, like, Army of Darkness 2, which morphed to the show, and then do, like, a Evil Dead 2, and then eventually do, like, a sequel, which would have had Ash and Mia team up. That would have been kind of cool, actually, yeah. Uh, but they turned it into the TV show, so at least we got, like, something out of that. 
But next up is you, Drill. What do you think of Ash as a character? I mean, it is interesting to see his progression going from like a like a normal college student in the first one. Then, of course, he sees all of his friends die and like come back as deadites. So he's for and basically driven to the point of insanity where he where he pretty much can't be like you can't break him anymore because he's already like been broke broken once so now he's turned into like the now now he's like turned into like the quick-witted like dead-eye killer and every everyone loves him for that also Personally, he was a dead-eye himself in evil dead 2 i remember that yeah and yeah and he ended up like he ended up like fighting out of that mm-hmm. yeah i don't yeah, usually when people get possessed, like, they don't like get out of it, which is which is pretty impressive for Ash. So refreshing my memory, Ash is like the first one that ever fought being a deadite, and he reverted back. In canon, uh, I believe so. Interesting. Yeah. But is that all you have to say, Drew? I mean, Brandel and the others have pretty much said what a what I was gonna say. I think he's a great character, and yeah, he wouldn't be the same without Bruce Campbell. And you love to see him any time, whether it's in like video game or or like movie form. How even uh, like they do even like evolve his character a bit in the TV show, being a more like jaded Ash who just wants to like who basically is who's still haunted by his past. I think I saw the first episode actually, and I swear, isn't there a scene where Ash like bangs someone in the bathroom? I forget. Yes, there is. Oh, so yeah. he, he pulled <laughs> the a constant. The way that I come back is a bit funny because it was just him doing it on accident. <laughs> That's so funny. But, but I got a question. If if this is not a question, in the dog, if you guys don't mind, sure. If you ask me. Um, I guess so. Can Evil Dead actually continue without Ash? Because regardless of how good, um, you know, Evil Dead Rise and the um, one before that, you know, the remake of one, a retell of one, right? Mm. Can the series continue on without Ash? You know, the main a draw of the series? I think it's, you know, I, I asked this question in my brain, like, a lot. I think it's kind of hard because they have to keep creating these new scenarios each and every single time and i mean the characters they put in there are fine for the new ones but i feel like they are missing something without ash it's like the new movies aren't bad but every time i watch them i feel like man it's something missing here where it's like they could use either a more macho protagonist or they could use something like this and we typically don't get it that's not to say that the new protagonists are horrible but it just feels like it's not the same it's something it's like evil dead but it's different well see well I, to add on to that actually my um i guess gripe is that they're not doing anything necessarily original because almost all the between you know four and five I mean, yeah right yeah those movies are excellent right like i prefer those movies over most of the series keep in mind right but they are not original they always do like a reference to ash or recreate something that came from previous movies rather than do something you know very original like the closest thing to originality would be with that rise but they did some freaking shit in that boy <laughs> i won't oh. deny that right yeah yeah, but uh, I think they should, like, you know, if they really want to step away from Ash just for one time, whether it be a reference or not, they need to do something different. Like, if it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. The point is that they need to try to do something a little different. Anyone else? Then, you, use Ash again. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was yeah. going to say, anyone else want to chime in on uh, like, Evil Dead without Ash? Like, like, I think it can work without Ash, but I do want them to at least do one more movie, like, where he like passes the torch i know they kind of tried to do it in the tv series but it just didn't kind it just didn't really hit the mark for me i think we at least deserve one more film with ash in my opinion i i agree with what was being said about how they need to do something 
more original because I know, especially with like the 2010 Evil Dead and even Evil Dead Rise, they're almost supposed to be like uh, reboots of the series, but it's still kind of the same idea. And even with Evil Dead Rise, like there were so many hints that it was like we were like oh my god it's a new ash and oh cool it's it's a lady this time you know like and that's fine but um and kind of tying it in with the the second question um there is a certain charisma and a certain character that you just don't get without ash and whether that's because, I mean, you could attribute that to Bruce Campbell being Bruce Campbell, or you could attribute it to, um, you know, it, whether it's idea recycling or, you know, what have you. Um, there is something about Evil Dead that makes it not quite Evil Dead without Ash. Um, you know, whether it's the first movie, like, I didn't really care for him very much in the first movie, but the second from the second movie, you know, on and then the TV series, like, he's fantastic. Like, I, it's just, they're very synonymous in my head, so I think it could be done, but it's gonna, it, it, it would take some, some new ideas, I think. I saw someone say if they would do an idea where they team up Mia, the chick from Evil Dead Rise, the main protagonist, and Ash all together in one movie it would be probably one of the greatest things ever me and i kind of agree as like that would be a nice team up of seeing like three badass dead ice layers like just go ham on all of the dead eyes there i also i know we're going to talk about it later but i also think um they were onto something with the tv series in terms of trying to hand off the torch but We'll never find out what they were going to do with it next because we kind of got left hanging. But we can talk about that later because I know we're going to talk about the TV series later. Oh, sucks. But, uh, Brian, what about you? What do you, what do you think of Ash as a character? I've always found this character fascinating, especially with how he started. Because I remember when I watched the original Evil Dead, it was so strange because all the characters are there. And, you know, we're caring about these five, these five college-age kids, and it didn't seem like there was a central focus on somebody until we see Ash being the only one left. And then we see Ash struggling to survive. And like Drew said earlier, once he gets broken, it's like, okay, screw this. I'm pushing back hard. And he did. Then there was Army of Darkness, and it was interesting the shift in the way the story went because it went from dark gory and crazy to still gory and crazy but it was funny because by a certain point ash is now fighting back so he's no longer the same character but they did so in a way where him being the way he is works without without something like army of darkness being a parody of, of what it originally was nor is Evil Dead as a franchise a parody of what it started as. Yeah. I, to add on I to that... It, go ahead. I was going to say, the reason for it was Sam Raimi, I think, said they tried to get a PG-13 rating for Army of Darkness to get it, like, a wider release, but I think they still, because of the gore, they still got an R rating. Yeah, PG-13 for something like Evil Dead probably would have been weird. It could, it's possible, given Sam Raimi and all the stuff he's done, it's possible to have it pulled off. But it def I think it, I don't think it could have worked if it wasn't, if it wasn't rated R. But also, uh, I think Evil Dead, Evil Dead could work without Ash. But it's a question of, are you retreading the same formula, where it's some new schmuck? Coming in, coming in contact with a book, and you see the same thing start over again, or could you do a thing where they they can actually fight stuff off very early on in the plot, and they're not just helpless and scrambling and everything? Yeah, I think it's definitely gonna boil down to how original 
they get with the storylines and i think uh, one thing they should probably do is you know start to transition into a newer cast that is very eccentric like i'm gonna use scream as an example i think the reason why it sort of can continue without nev in uh the last movie scream 6 is because in that movie the newer characters are so charismatic that you kind of just blank out a little bit and forget and I don't think that Evil Dead has that because they sort of pull a GTA each time where it's like uh, they start a new story with a new cast and the only difference is they pull the rug out because it's a movie. Uh, so I think they need some staying power with some of these characters. Yeah, so the revenge that Screen had was the fact that we had like a legacy of characters being built up. Now with the new um, group, right? Technically, they started since four, but five and... Five started the whole new cast, right? Now, yeah. fortunately, you know, what happened with the Pages sphere, we lost Sydney, though, right? But it was also a net positive, considering that we got more screen time in the new characters, and new characters got, well, for one, were better written compared to five. Yeah. And they got more screen time without the main heroine on, on there, right? So, therefore, like, we can actually finally get a movie series without the main character because these characters were so well done. Yep. Evil Dead does not have that because, again, like like you mentioned, like when they had have a new cast, right? They don't follow up with that. They just move on to the next thing. Yeah, like so, it's like a character of the week <laughs> type thing. Yeah, and it feels like the connectivity is a little bit lost when they do that because, again, you're it, it, they're not like bad stories, but they're essentially starting over. And one thing that I would add to that I think um, kind of puts Evil Dead at a bit of a disadvantage is because they keep trying to reinvent and like kind of reinvent themselves essentially with new cast each time. Like it's still like I keep thinking about the TV series because they had new cast. They had really good characters. The writing was good. And then they just kind of have ignored it now. And they had some really good characters. They introduced some really good stuff, but they're just like, nope, that's, we're done with that now. And I'm like, oh. But you had a good start there. So it, it is something that kind of puts it at a disadvantage. I'm, I'm curious to see how this Evil Dead spinoff is going to go and what they do with it. And if they will continue any established storyline so far. I, I kind of want to see how that's done, but it remains to be seen, I guess. Uh, any other opinions on Ash before I move on to the next question? Going once, going twice. Well, soul to the Deadite Hooker in red. All right, so we're going to do this where what are your thoughts on the Deadite lore and the summonings itself is basically the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead. Ren Ren Ben, I want you to go first. Uh, I just have to say I laughed extremely hard just now when you said God is sold to the Deadite Hooker in red. I couldn't um, help myself. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, I think it's interesting how they took um, like kind of actual actual civilizations in a sense and uh, you know kind of like riffed off of that essentially. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting just how they incorporated things like the idea of the book of the dead and the you know listening to the the you know in the first movie uh first and second movie i guess you could say like listening to the incantation and i don't know i've just always i thought it was i've always found it really fascinating and interesting and um also like just also very um a little bit tropey too with like the whole like hey you should read this but you know what let's read it anyways um, but, uh, yeah, I just also like, like the, uh, I like the, the Necronomicon in general. I just think it's an interesting idea. Um, I like how it went from, um, the way it kind of evolved from being like this little book that, you know, didn't look like much in the first movie to, uh, evolving into something that like very obviously like has its own like life and and breathing i don't know like it's just it, it evolved into something that was so much more than i think they originally anticipated it does it looks super creepy i agree um <laughs> so i just saw your comment um but also at the same time i just i really like that design i was weird to say like oh i really like this design of this thing that is made from human skin but i don't know just it it uh 
I find I find it really interesting. The Deadite lore too, I think, is interesting in the way that they've played with it over the mo- over the course of the movies. Um, also, Deadites are really fun. I I just I really enjoy them. I think they're interest. I think they're an interesting take on the dead coming back. But yeah, those are some of my slightly disjointed thoughts about them. Ryan, what about you? It is your turn. What do you think of the Deadites in the Necronomicon lore? I found the lore interesting because it is sort of, looking back on it, it's sort of reminiscent to me of how, like, certain old horror movies kind of played out where, like, um, like on the one hand, the way somebody getting possessed by a Deadite almost makes you think of something like The Exorcist. And... You know, the book itself being made of human skin, but also having its own kind of power. It's like, don't mess with these forces. You don't know what you're dealing with. And if you're just stupid enough to do it, God bless you. And on top of that, uh, the way the Dead Eyes work, most times in movies where it's like there's something dark, evil, and unseen, it, it's always eventually taking control of a person to where you know something is wrong. But the way they did it where it was either taking control of a person or taking control of the environment, taking control of the environment, I thought was innovative when I saw the first movie because, you know, you don't really get that much where you got to deal with, like, these evil entities that, that tend to mess with everybody. It's always human possession, human possession, human possession. But you take control of an environment, then it's like, oh, God. Now I now this is worse than I thought because I don't know where I can turn to feel safe and whatnot. And for a horror movie, I think it actually ups the ante some because most horror movies, there's always that general feeling of we're safe. But with this, like, no, you're not safe. If you're not careful, you're getting clapped. So it's either be smart and try to escape as best you can or you know, get wrecked. Drill, what about you? What do you think of the Deadite and Necronomicon lore? I mean, I think it's interesting since it's implied to have gone back probably hundreds of years to the point where, where it makes you think where they created it. Honestly, that's what I was thinking for another Evil Dead movie. They could have made it a period piece to see how the Necronomicon was created. That would be great for an original idea, because I, I don't think we've ever seen the uh, the researchers uh, grab the book initially and see how civilization got, like, destroyed by having it. So that'd be a very cool idea. I don't know why they haven't done that yet. Yeah, like, make it a period piece that takes place, like, in the 20s. But honestly, it would be cool to see, like... We don't get many period piece horror movies, so it'd be cool to see. Although they did expand a bit in the show. And also there's the whole Kendarian dagger thing, which is, I think, like, isn't it, like, used to, like, destroy, like, counter the book or something like that? As far as I know, yes, the dagger is used uh, to counter the book and then send the spirits, like back so they don't come out uh but i don't i'm pretty sure it probably works the same way in the lore yeah uh, yeah it all i always like that the like like the dead eyes were kind of like a hive mind where they where you were never really safe because they knew where you were everywhere and how like and how their influence like spreads like the more power they get I always thought that was really cool. I guess Although so. it does it does lead to some pretty funny moments like in the show. Show, but I don't wanna to spoil too much. I guess I'll go next real quick. Uh so it's very interesting lore. It, right. It's I one thing I like about the Deadites is the fact that of course they're absolutely insane. Crazy. Um they're crazy to the point where they will either maim themselves they will cut their skin you know rip their teeth out and it is 
one of the more disturbing visuals of the entire series but i, I think that's a great point uh and how they just mentally fuck with like the protagonist where you know when someone you know gets possessed and then they start to maim themselves and then they go back to normal you see some of this in the first one and the second one uh where ash sees the girl get possessed that's close to him he tries to kill her she goes back to normal it's like it starts to mess with his mind and it's a little bit of psychological horror there where it's like no don't kill me or whatever please i'm not really his monster when he's like just hitting her in the doorway a couple of minutes ago uh so it's is very very disturbing and awesome and also the book itself like <laughs> One thing I, I find funny, though, is in order to kickstart these movies, there's always some idiot reading out of the contents of the Necronomicon, despite how disgusting it looks. And I think the worst example is kind of Evil Dead Rise, where, like, I'm like, dude, it has teeth. Why are you touching it? That was the first thing I said when, when I saw the I children won't. fuck with it. Human curiosity is a blessing think, and a curse. Yeah. That's exactly what I was to say. Like, it... It's one of those things where horror movies where you mess with some dark magic or or a dark entity. It's always the fact that there's curiosity because because the thing of it is, if you throw in a character who's sort of savvy about that sort of thing, it might actually throw off the whole flow. But then it's also kind of funny because, you know, hey, horror movies could very well exist in these universes, so at the very least... Maybe somebody could have been there to warn him about, hey, don't touch that. What is that? Human skin. I want to look. Don't do it. There's teeth on there. Huh? The teeth feel real. I'm going to read it anyway. Well, good luck. And there's there also always seems to be a bit of an element, too, of... Like, there's there's always, like, the boyfriend who wants to be a little bit skeptical and, like, give his girlfriend a hard time by reading the book. Be like, no, nah, no, nah, it's gonna be fine. Here, look, I'm gonna read it. See, everything's fine. There's always that little bit of hubris that's involved as well. A lot of that happens in the first movie, and it did get to the point where it started to piss me off. I'm like, okay, I understand you're trying to troll, dude, but it's, it's like once they started listening to the researcher, it's like, I, I think you should take heed of what this guy is saying, but before that happens, it's too late, and everyone starts to turn, so... Uh, I, I do like just the morbid curiosity of it, but it starts to get a little bit more ridiculous as it goes on. But I guess what it leads to is again, the whole situation just going to shit. Uh, as for the differing dead, I, it's, it's so many of them. It's either they look like normal people and then they start to turn and it gets worse when there's that one deadite that keeps transforming i think this happens in the first one where they lock the woman in the basement and she gets worse and worse and worse by the second wait is that the one where someone like sticks a pencil in someone i yes. think so yes yeah that was pretty gross yeah, it was right. It was right in her Achilles heel, I believe. It was like, it was disgusting. Yeah, the first one that turns in the first movie is Ash's sister, and then yeah, she's the one that stabs his girlfriend in the ankle. And then they get to the point where uh, they start flying around like evil dungeon demon monsters so i'm just like yeah the medieval ones were kind of just a little bit more out there outlandish and then of course you have what is in the show which i assume some of the ones from the games are representative of that where it's these giant skinless demons walking around shooting electricity at people uh so i like how the designs just kept getting either more and more crazy by the second so you get literally like make the series into anything at this point oh yeah i keep forgetting too the whatever the fuck that giant flesh spider monster was at the end of evil dead rise i was like oh my god what is that uh it was a couple of people just draped in bodies so you never know how far the extent of these transformations are going to go mm -hmm. that's part of the best visual in any of the evil dead movies honestly Dude, when I saw that thing, I saw like 5,000 legs. I'm like, run. <laughs> Get the fuck out of there immediately. Go. Yeah, sort of had a field day with that one, though, but I'm not going to uh, entertain that oh. right there. Oh, please no. Please no. Uh, Brandon, you already went, right? No, actually, I just I got back, so I didn't get a chance to go yet. Good. Oh, what do you think of the Deadites? Okay. 
Uh, they honestly just zombies, but with extra steps. Because <laughs> uh, since um, I find it weird how they could be both insanely wacky and, you know, lucky go jolly type shit to being the most sadistic people you ever meet. Like like you guys mentioned earlier, like, because essentially when you become a dead eye, you're practically already dead. <laughs> no, but unless you transform as a living person already, no, there's a good chance you could revert back like Ash did. Or if you kill the dead eye, uh, the person could come back, right? But they go to die themselves from the injuries because we've seen that before in, like, in some of the movies. So I do appreciate um, the little nuance between um, the transformations and how people can uh, become a dead eye and revert back and you know stuff like that. But what I'm more interested in uh, is the Necro on Namicon. I like how uh, I think this is more theory speculative. I'm not sure it's confirmed or not. But I like how it can actually recreate events that happened in the past with um with its contact because that's what the fourth movie is. It's more it's not it's a remake, sure, and it's a sequel. But it the the book itself was recreating things that happened with the first movie, which is why I know it. It was a remake, you know? I like stuff like that. Uh, that it can, uh, like, you know what? I remember this one time back in March of this century. You know what? Let me recreate that and see how this turns out this time around. So, yeah, from a little perspective, I like how it can recreate events if it wanted to. Remember, Rem- Ben, did you go yet? Uh, yeah, I, um, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I was the first person. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna move on to the next one. What do you guys think of the director Sam Raimi, and what do you think of his directing style for Evil Dead, and what he brought to the table? You can also mention any other films that you want as well. I'm gonna let Brandon go first. Uh, quite frankly, he's actually an excellent director because I was not familiar with him, but I was familiar with his work before Evil Dead. You know, Spider-Man fans, <laughs> any Spider-Man fan will know how he works, right? But also his other little movies like um, Drag Me to Hell. I'm not sure you guys seen that movie or not. <laughs> I oh, have boy. not. Yeah, uh, you should add that to the list for a watch party because that was actually a pretty fun movie. But yeah, uh, I was familiar with his work, right? And I love how he can... I love his cinematography, right? But also I like how he can implement some horror stuff and non-horror um, stuff, you know? So, so for example, Doctor Strange, the most recent thing he did that I've seen, I like how he turned it into a horror movie with Scarlet Witch and all of her shenanigans and whatnot. So I can appreciate him ha- able to do pretty much PG, you know, <laughs> horror. Yeah, and death, of course. The, you can make Doctor Strange kind of resemble a Deadite. Mm-hmm. I, I like that whole scene where Wanda was contorting her body and the eyeball and the puddle. It's like, it's pure... It's weird to describe. It's like when it comes to horror and just his close-up shots and visuals and and, and close-ups of people's eyeballs and stuff like that. It's it's very intriguing horror perspectives when he does it. Uh, it's a little bit of it too as well in Spider-Man Two, where they're trying to operate on uh fucking Doc Ock and get the legs or the metal legs up off them and it seems to go all over the place people screaming crying someone tries to get a chainsaw and dies uh so that style to evil dead i think the one great example is when ash goes into the basement because you already know one of them is down there and you start to see like stuff around the environment catches your eye like you see the pipe that has it's basically like covered in blood and once you see that it's just like it spills all over him everything starts to go crazy downstairs uh so he has a keen for uh visualization when it comes to being a director which is one thing that's kind of a loss art with some people because they don't know how to capture like all of that really well or it's like a rarity mm-hmm so I think he, I think he's a really great director. Um, if they get it for anything, I know that I'm watching it like day one for sure because he also knows how to make something entertaining in like a short amount of time. I would I would consider him and James Gunn to be like you know no filler, just straight up running with all the entertainment, uh, and that's the kind of director that he is. So I I think his visual style is unparalleled, and I'm also I, I mean. 
I also do like the people that's coming in for the franchise as well. Uh, Lee Cronin, who did Evil Dead Rise, sort of emulated some of those shots as well. Uh, I think the most badass one is where the lady comes out of the water and you see the title card right there behind her. I, I thought that would be like something like a Sam Raimi shot uh, if he shot something like that. I like how cheesy it was too, considering it just come out of the water. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was I was kind of like, oh shit, and and then I was like, oh, there's a title card too. So that's one way to introduce the movie. But title card, title card, as Gene Hackman would say. But Mr. Brian, what do you think of Sam Raimi as a director and what he brought to the table for Evil Dead? I think Sam Raimi as a director does exactly what is needed to, especially when you're trying to do something scary. Like, most times with horror movies, at least in my experience, there's a point where you just kind of see where, um, you kind of see where it's going. But then, on the other hand, with somebody like Sam Raimi, there's a little element of unpredictability. And it makes it to where, because of that, it can it's the kind of thing that can keep you on edge especially if the point is to actually scare because we got to a point in horror movies where you can just know what's coming and with somebody like sam raimi you you won't really be disappointed unless you just you're just kind of like not too you're kind of like jaded on the horror movie experience What about you, Rimmer and Ben? Um, I agree with what everybody's been saying. I really enjoy his style. Um, I do agree with what you said too, Ren, about uh, like his choices for visuals and the way he frames things is just really, really good. And also, I, I do agree with what you're saying too about the up and coming directors, like that the title card in Evil Dead Rise. I do remember distinctly like, seeing that and being like, damn, that was a good choice. Um, but yeah, for Sam, for Sam Raimi, yeah, I, I like his style. I did really enjoy, um, what he did with Dr. Strange because I was like, oh yeah, I could tell, I could tell 100% who directed this. Cause it just, it had some elements that you just, that are just, okay. Yeah. This is Sam Raimi. So but yeah, I'm pretty much just agreeing with what you guys have already said. Drill, do you have any opinions on this? Drew? Yeah, yeah. I would say honestly, he he brought a lot of new stuff for being for horror back in the eighties. Since since it was eighty one, and we were just getting out of slasher movies, and I guess there weren't too many. Well, I guess it was a different type of supernatural horror compared to what we had. I also heard it was a lot riding on this movie as well, like. I I heard Raimi had like a shoestring budget and if this movie flopped it probably would have been the end of his existence because he sold like everything to make it. Yeah, basically they were out of, they were pretty much out of college making the movie and most of the cast were like Raimi's close friends. Yeah, and uh, all of the scenes were legit filming in the woods and uh, a lot of the actors and actresses were in pain because they had to stand out there all day and rummage through trees and yell. So I heard there was a lot of like on set turmoil because all the actors were basically feeling like shit. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy making a movie, especially a horror movie, but he did some really impressive there, he did some really impressive shots for being on the shoestring budget, and he, I, I think that's why, like with the second movie, he basically remade it because he had much more money and a lot, and learned a lot from the mistakes he made in the first one. That is quite interesting. A little diverges. Them remaking the first movie again with the second one is a. Uh, what would you feel about that, Drew? Honestly, I mean, I guess it kind of makes it a bit pointless to watch the first one, but but it also 
but it also shows you how the film series started and Sam Raimi as a director. It definitely, it basically is like his definitive version of Evil Dead since since a lot of shots were remade and it basically reuses a lot of the same plot. Obviously with much more comedy thrown in. Yeah, and obviously there's differences because I believe that it's only Ash and his girlfriend in that little remade sequence. It's not any of the other characters. They're basically non-existent. Yeah. But it did end up showing, but but it is like but it did have a significantly bigger budget. Yeah. That's something I definitely noticed, especially the ending. There's a lot of special effects there. Yeah. Uh, but I do really hope that Sam Raimi keeps doing horror movies or just films in general because he is a great director. All I gotta say to that is uh MCU every time you do a horror related project just hit that man up i mean it's it's free real estate yeah hmm. all right so we're gonna move on to the next question number four have you played any of the evil dead video games if so what do you think of them if you haven't played them what would your ideal evil dead game be if they made a new one brandon you go first all right uh so i'm on have opt out a question i've not played a single one i do own the um the dead by daylight clone of evil dead but i never played it personally but i guess the closest thing i had played was dying not dying like um dead by daylight so i mean i think i had played one because <laughs> he's in the game but um i an ideal game hmm, that's kind of hard i guess you're your generic you know beat up action game you know because after all man shotguns and um chainsaw arm like you could literally make a freaking like you know hacker slash type game out of it so that would be my ideal choice out of it uh you guys can brainstorm i need some more ideas out of it drill what about you you play any of the games yeah i actually played a handful of these like the first one the first one being hail to the king which is a resident evil clone and honestly the idea of making an RE clone for Evil Dead isn't bad. It's just that the control scheme is really weird, and I guess it didn't translate well to the whole Resident Evil style. Since you have to control Ash's gun and his uh, chainsaw. And also, it can be a bit cryptic at times. But Bruce Campbell does come back to voice him, voice him in this one. And I think it's supposed to take place between, like, I like shortly after the events of Army of Darkness, I think. So it's technically a sequel. Honestly, the attempt was there, but it was kind of it, it it just didn't hit the mark. I haven't played like Hail the Fistful of Boomstick, but I do own it, and I've heard it is slightly better. Re- Regeneration's actually pretty good. Because the whole game takes place in like a men, in like a hos- in like a mental hospital, and and so I think one of the doctors tries like experimenting with the Necronomicon, hence why every all like the patients and doctors turn into deadites, and you even get like a deadite sidekick who, who's funny enough, voiced by Ted Raimi, so he's basically meant to be the comedic relief. I remember that because uh, I haven't played Regeneration, but I do remember there was like a little sidekick and you could do certain functions with them, like kick them towards enemies or uh, open up particular puzzles. Yeah, it was like one of two video game roles Ted Raimi has done. But yeah, but yeah, he's basically just Ash's sidekick and I think he's like, I think he's like half dead eyed or something like that. Yes. Yeah, I think it's not technically canon, but it's a fun game. It's definitely like out of all the like the older dead uh, evil dead games, though that I'd say just play regeneration because at least it's actually a pretty solid action horror game. As and, oh god, and then obviously I played a bunch of. 
the Evil Dead game, which wasn't a bad Dead by Daylight clone. It's just that they just stopped supporting it and the whole balance was messed up and everything. I have and, so much to say about that game. Yeah, like, it feels like they had a great idea, but then they kind of fumbled it. And they could have also had put in more single player stuff. I don't know. The problem is, is that they just that they just made it way more unfun to play, and then once people obviously left, then then the game died. And it's kind of a shame, because it is a cool idea. And it was like one of the few times we they actually got everyone to like, agree on the rights, because for some reason, like, they can't like, for some reason, like, some of the games can't reference, like, Evil Dead like, Army of Darkness Army of Darkness because it's owned by, like, a different licensor, and even the show can't, re like, at first couldn't reference Army of Darkness, only Evil Dead 2, so yeah, the rights are, like, all over the place and it was, like, one of the rare games to actually reference all the films yeah, it's true, because I think uh, Ash from the TV show is there, also the one from Evil Dead 2. Like, every form of him is there, along with the character packs where they had the remake characters too, I remember that. You know, they could have capitalized on Evil Dead Rise as well, and even had, like, the high-rise building as, like, a map. Unfortunately, we are never getting that. Nope, just died too soon. Uh, so I, I guess I'll speak a little bit, I, mean, you know, I, I won't keep it too long, but yeah, I have played a lot of hours into the Evil Dead, Dead by Daylight clone, and it's, for what it is, it was fun. Uh, just like Drill though, when I was playing it with him, the only issue I had is they decided to do these random updates where it felt like the demon was getting like super overpowered. Uh, especially the Elagos demon where it walks up on you and it will electrify the fuck out of you and you just get stun locked uh, but on concept it was a good idea I just wish they carried out the balancing like a lot better than it was in the actual game as for every other Evil Dead I've always been curious to play them but I never touched them myself if I were to make my own Evil Dead game I feel like a good basis would be Evil Within. Cause I mean, they're not doing it anymore cause well, they shut down Tango, which fucking sucks. But uh, that would be a good premise because it's already like kind of psychological in a sense with the Deadites messing with you. So I think if they did something like that where it's a physical manifestation, you hear stuff laughing, you're in the woods, you're by yourself, you don't know what's going on. I think that'd be a perfect type of single player game while also you can't trust your partners because they could turn into a deadite. Uh, I think oh, you're onto something yeah. actually. That would be a good basis. Yeah, oh, I forgot I forgot to answer that far. But I would say just make RE4 with Evil Dead and just say fuck it, add in some RE6 stuff like counters. <laughs> Jeez. I would I would like it to be action horror though. I I think that'd be a good mold, but I I want them to completely fuck with my mind cuz again, you're I think the main thing about Evil Dead is isolation. You're kind of on your own uh once all your friends turn. So at that point, I think it should just go crazy as a game and I think Evil Within would be a good basis. Yeah. I mean, as long as you can cut that ice in half, then it's good to me. Uh, what about you, uh, Mr. Brian? Have you played any of the Evil Dead games? I played the Dead by Dead by Daylight clone. As an idea, I thought it was pretty cool, especially especially considering, like I said, how the original movie itself starts. Um, I I just dropped it after a certain point. Um. I will say if there ever was an ideal game that I think I would want to go for, it'd be like, have some, I don't know if anybody ever, ever heard of this, but have something like what they did for the constant Constantine game based off of the movie with Keanu Reeves, where there's action, there's shooting, but there's also magic and, you know, make it a little bit open world. And maybe there are some puzzles you have to solve and you can get, you know, different magic spells and all that to help fight the deadites. Whether it be single player or multiplayer is a little bit difficult for me to really think on. 
But I think they could have gone that way. And, you know, throw in a little bit of, like, a little bit of Resident Evilness, but more so, like, you know, Resident Evil style with a uh, two remake, where it's, like, third person over the shoulder, not um, not from the top down or anything like that. And uh, that's pretty much my ideal game. And I think it could have worked if given the chance, but I don't know if anybody ever thought that out because of uh, watching the Constantine game based off the movie, the pre- the premise was pretty much that. And not only that, it gave it gave a chance to you to do a little bit more than what uh, Tianu's version of that character did in the movie. I also think people just mainly want to get their hands on that fucking chainsaw hand and use it because it's it, it's kind of why it's a waste of opportunity with the game itself, uh, the Dead by Daylight clone, because uh, they're stopping support. Using Ash with the chainsaw is probably the best thing in the game, hands down. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the and best now, melees too. Like they surprisingly have a lot of creative kills with the melee weapons. So I'm gonna need that and the boomstick, and I think I think I'll be good to go. That'd be like a fun fucking time. Ren Ren Ben, what about you? Uh, have you played any of the Evil Dead games? Uh, I have. I haven't played any of the older ones, having uh, come to the series uh, quite a bit later. But I did play quite a bit of the the one that came out. I hesitate to call it a DVD clone because to me it did not feel like DVD. Um. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was I thought it was really fun. I thought it was an interesting concept. I liked that there was um, the asymmetrical horror side of things. But then there was also like you could play. There was like a story to it. There was a single player mode as well. And I really enjoyed that about it. I was really unhappy that it did die off as quick as it did, because I think they had a really good idea. But unfortunately, it kind of went the way that a lot of those games do because they get called DVD clones. They get immediately compared to DVD and uh, it it just ends up kind of killing them off and it I think is a, a really unfortunate thing. Um, but uh, one fun thing I will say about DVD is one of the maps um, I forget what the name of it is but it's the one that has the movie theater. There is actually a uh evil dead clone movie poster in the movie theater is called the sinking ones but it looks exactly like the original evil dead movie poster um that's kind of cool but um yeah i really enjoyed that i really enjoyed the game that had come out a couple of years ago uh if they were to make another one i really like the idea i don't remember who suggested it but somebody suggested like an re4 style game Um, Which I think would really work. As soon as you said that, I was like, you know, I think that would really work because with Ash's character, especially if you made Ash the main character, which I would just kind of I I kind of assumed he would be the main character because there, you know, like we were talking about earlier, the series is very synonymous with Ash. Um, But I think it would work really well because... Uh, particular, I would say RE4 remake style more so than the original RE4 because the remake had a lot more, had some of those like feeling isolated elements. Um, there were like ele- elements of um, horror by being overwhelmed in a sense, like when you've got lots of enemies coming at you. Um, but then also you have like all the different choices of weapons and. Uh, I don't know why, but I just got it in my head that it would be really cool to take down a Super Salvador with a chainsaw hand, because how about it taste your own medicine? But <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think um, like an RE2 remake or an RE4 uh, remake style um, would be really good. That third person over the shoulder, like, shoulder, like you guys were saying. Um, I feel like that could lend itself really well to a game. As for what the story would look like, that I don't know. Um, You could go with a completely original story, or you could even just be something where you're revisiting the stories of the movies or the stories of the TV show or what have you. The TV show might actually give you a little more uh, 
a might a more variety of settings but yeah so um i am gonna however check out those retro games that you guys mentioned because i'm like oh i want to check those out now because now i know they exist so i'm gonna go look for them i mean just a warning is that the ES one and Dreamcast one's kind of a bad RE clone, so don't that's expect okay. something great. Like Regeneration's like the only one that's like probably the best. I'm I'm I'll be really honest though, I wouldn't be looking necessarily for like something that blows me away. I'd just be more like, this is so cool. I'm playing a retro Evil Dead game. Yeah, a side scroller maybe you know, where you're going around with the chainsaw slicing people up. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I recently that played would be that so game. Satisfying. I recently played that game Splatterhouse, so I, I think maybe that could be another basis as well. Uh, but oh, the 2010 remake. Yes. But uh, we're moving on to the next one. Uh, describe your three favorite and most memorable scenes within the Evil Dead franchise. And we will start with Brian first. Um, <clears throat> first memorable one that comes to mind is uh, Evil Ash. Because, you know, looking in a mirror and seeing your reflection just automatically turn into this evil demonic thing. It's like, oh no, I'm screwed. This cannot be me. And, you know, with the theme of isolation, that kind of goes to the point of, you know, if you're not careful, that could be you if you don't do something to stop it. Um, <clears throat> I said this earlier before we started this, this is only memorable because this is part of what freaked me out so much watching the original movie. That doggone tree. And that's all I'll say about that. Um, and then, of course, um, <laughs> seeing Ash in medieval times where he gives that famous line because I heard that line so many times until I sat down and watched it and I was like, I get it. It's both hilarious, but it's such a serious moment for him. But nobody else but Bruce Campbell could really do that, that line. So those are, those are my three things. I'll start with mine. I, I'm going to keep it real simple. I, I like that scene in Army of Darkness where he's fighting that female deadite. And the way he kills her is so damn cool. Where he puts the shotgun like behind the shoulder, and he shoots her, and then he just has this moment where he just like shudders, a uh, sense of joy. That scene is is so damn good. I love it. Um, if I had another one, I liked the scene from the remake where it's the final kill where she kills the uh, other deadite with a chainsaw. And it's just blood everywhere. I'm talking like someone turned the sprinklers on. That was, it's just everywhere. Um, as she gets like sliced in half. So it's really fucking amazing and cool. And for the last one that I remember the most, I'm going to say it's the scene where Ash like cuts off his hand because he kind of gets in a battle with it and it moves all over the place. It gives him the finger. And then he gets like a sense of euphoria where he like shoots it in the wall. But beforehand, when he cuts off his hand is like, all right, I want to teach you a lesson. So he gets the chainsaw out and then you just see the blood just splatter all over his face. He's like, who's laughing now? And it's like, it's just crazy that that entire movie up until that point is crazy. But it just feels like that's like the peak point uh, where he's like, I'm done with this shit. I'm done with uh being called crazy i'm done with this hand let me just cut it off and get rid of it um so that that was and it led to the chainsaw it led to the hand chainsaw which is also another favorite of mine so i would say those three in particular Rem and ben how about you three favorite moments from the movies okay so these are in no particular order um one i also like that iconic line uh the moment he delivers that iconic line in army of darkness it's one of my favorite gifts to use it's all i just 
that movie is also just amazing. So actually two of my moments are from that movie. Uh, the other one that actually comes from that movie as well is the whole montage when they're getting ready and like he makes like the iron hand and it's just it's so corny because it's like you're in medieval times. And he's like, oh, here, let me whip out this chemistry textbook. And yeah, we could totally make gunpowder now. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's just it, the whole montage is just it's fantastic. Um, and then my third moment is actually from the TV series. Uh, there is one part. Uh, it is uh, I, I'm trying like I want to describe it, but I also don't want to like spoil it. Um <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to spoil the TV series, but there is one part. Uh, it takes place in a morgue uh, where Ash uh, puts his head in a very uh, interesting place uh, for a deadite. And I just it, it was both like the grossest and also one of the most funniest things I've ever seen. But yeah, so those are my three favorites. Mm, drill bit. What about you? Oh, I think he is sleeping with the deadites. Uh, Brandon, what about you? Sorry, what was the question? No drill got a foot in his mouth, so... Uh, <laughs> foot in his mouth? Okay. It's uh, top three favorite moments within the franchise. Oh, man. Uh, hmm. Good question. I might... I might go with the ending with Evil Dead Rise. Well, not the ending, per se. More so the transformation of, you no know, the MILF spider uh, deadite. Her, um, the ending of um, Evil Dead Four, because the, the showdown with the demon and her her arm getting mashed off, you know, and it cutting demon in half, like that shit was cool. <laughs> Can you deny that? But number three, though, that's a hard one, because you got the ending of Evil Dead Two, like him going to on um, the place for Evil Darkness, Army of Darkness, I mean. Then you got the um, Shepherd Mall incident when he comes back. Oh yeah, where where he tells the demon to sh uh get out of the store, and and yeah. then it's like the heroic uh hell to the king baby. I believe that happens there. Yeah, that line is. If I had an honorable mention, that would be my favorite because it's literally the epitome of the hero saves the day. It, it doesn't get any better than that. He saves the day. He gets the girl. He blows the demon's head off, and then he ends it with "Hell to the king, baby!" and he kisses her. It's it couldn't yeah. it couldn't be a more iconic ending. Yeah, which is right. funny because they wanted to go with a more bleak ending originally. I saw that. That's the one where Ash like sleeps for way too long, and then he wakes up, and then he sees like the city in ruin. He's like, "I fell asleep" or something like that. Yeah, I really, like, I really don't like that ending that much. I kind of I like mean, the ending they went with. It's a bit funny, but it's also kind of ends the series on the downer. Yeah, I, I prefer the original ending. The hail to the king, baby, is also just delivered in a way that only Bruce Campbell could do as Ash Williams. Mm. So, drill. Since you're back, what about your top three favorite moments? Hmm. Honestly, it's hard to say, honestly, because there's a lot of great moments. Obviously, probably one of them would be with, like, with, with like, the mini ashes, like, in Army of Darkness. That's a really funny scene. I think that's a pretty great scene, and even if it is, like, one of the more sillier scenes in the movie, I always remembered it. And then there was obviously like that one shot, like that one shot from Evil Dead Two, where, at where like the I guess like the Necronomicon force is like behind him, and then it, and then it just goes into like a really quick shot where, he, like it's hard to describe, but it's just like a really quick shot, and he like moves across the forest, and I always thought that was cool. And then obvious, and then finally, like the scene where Ash is just where you see all of like the furniture and everything laughing at Ash, and then he just completely loses his shit and and then just snaps. Like, there's a lot of cool practical effects in there, and it just shows his sanity like breaking completely, and even 
Even the lamp is laughing at him, which is pretty funny. But that would be that would be the ones for me. All right, we're gonna move on to the final two questions here. Uh, this one's a bit of a long one, but hear me out. Uh, so the Evil Dead series has like two distinctive tones that change within the franchise. For example, Army of Darkness was more of a comedic movie, whereas the first film is way more serious. Which side do you lean on? Slapstick, serious horror for Evil Dead, or both? And I'm gonna let Brandon go first. Honestly, I think both can coexist because, like, I'm pretty sure we have more slapstick than serious. But no, I'm personally more of a fan of the more serious nature of the, of the franchise. So I feel like that was when I'm the most engaged. But at the same time, though, in terms of, like, the characters, though, like, the slapsticks work better, because, like, you wouldn't have um, Ash as he is without, the, you know, the humor side of Evil Dead, right? So I think both can coexist, though. But from a personal preference, I prefer the more serious side of things, because I find the movies to be more entertaining from that front. I guess I'll go real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I don't mind either or, because... It doesn't, they, they could pick one or the other. It, it doesn't really matter. I guess if I had to pick one, I would say serious, but both of them are entertaining. Uh, Army of Darkness is one of my favorite movies just because of how ridiculous and stupid it could get. But that's part of the charm of the movie. And, and I think that both can sort of have a place uh, within the medium. Uh, but the serious ones are also badass, like the remake. And then I guess you could say Evil Dead Rise was also, you know, in serious nature as well as the first one. Uh, whereas 2 and Army of Darkness, they kind of delve into slapstick stuff as well as the show. Uh, but as long as they keep it funny, interesting, it's completely fine to me. I just like the more serious aspect because it's real tension. It's real horror. It's like... That's kind of how I started, so I'm a little bit biased to that, but still, it's like, when it's done well, and it's mostly been done well on both sides, I don't mind both. What about you, Drill? I mean, personally, I like the more uh, horror comedy aspects of it, especially if you can balance it well enough. I mean, there are great horror comedies like Shaun of the Dead, for example. I think there is a way to balance it where you can still make it feel scary and funny. Funny, like, there's definitely some pretty terrifying moments in Evil Dead 2, along with some really funny ones. And although it is, like, me being a bit biased since Army of Darkness was the first one I saw, and that's probably my favorite out of the trilogy. But I don't mind if it goes, like, in a horror round. Because they can still because because they can still give us some great movies like with Evil Dead Rise, but but I think without the comedy aspects we wouldn't have like a character as great as Ash, so that's just my opinion on it. Mm, what about you, Raymond Ben? Um, so I like both. But I think I I'm this I'm kind of the same way where I would fall more into the uh, slightly more slapstick horror um, because I think with Evil Dead, they do a good job balancing it. I think you see it really on full display in the TV show because the TV show definitely I felt like did a really good job balancing the um scary moments and the horror and the you know the gore and lots of blood but also it was really really damn funny in spots um and i think that is one thing that is really unique about the evil dead franchise is it can do both and it can do both very well um and i think that some of the horror even I probably say like even some of the horror games and some of the horror movies that we have now um that find that balance between um serious horror and slapstick uh might not exist in the same sense that we know of them now without Evil Dead having kind of paved the way for that. Because even like thinking like 
I love Resident Evil, and part of Resident Evil is it has a lot, like, it's serious horror, at, but at the same time, it throws in the jokes. It Like, Leon has corny one-liners. Like, stupid things happen, and it works. So, I while I do fall more on the slapstick side, more the comedic horror kind side of things, I do think that that is one thing that does make this franchise very distinct, is that it can do two distinctive tones and do them well. And I think that's what um, makes it really good. So maybe I'm actually saying I like both. But um, I will say the one thing, though, is I, I was um, really I was it was a little jarring for me at first, having only watched like the TV show and the original movies to then go to the 2010 uh, Evil Dead and then Evil Dead Rise. It was a little jarring because I was like, oh, but but jokes, but funny oh okay okay don't change your mindset and they're both and like those are very good movies too but anyway so yeah i think that is um what does make it distinct this is does both and it does both well brian what about you do you prefer more horror or slapstick for evil dead i like most everybody prefer both together because when looking at how sam raimi does things He's probably one of the few movie makers that I've seen where he can actually balance out both to where you not only still get a joyful experience and a scary experience, but it's one where it leaves an impressive mark on you as a viewer. Because a lot of times, I know when I laugh at something that happens in horror movies, especially modern day horror movies, is you it's not even that it was intentionally funny to me. It's just funny because it's the characters doing dumb stuff. Then with with someone like Sam Raimi, it's not a matter of they're doing dumb stuff. And instead of it being scary, it just wanted to be funny. It's Sam Raimi throwing in something that is actually humorous and actually takes you out of the realm of horror just for a second, right up until he reminds you, hey funny but still scary and you still get exactly what you need out of something like evil dead and that doesn't happen too often with horror movies these days yep 100 percent agreed uh and i i think just to add on to that for a final point uh, the fact that they did both so well is probably why people are like kind of bordering yeah i can go either horror or slapstick but both is pretty cool because they did both so well so the final question of the night is to rank the entire Evil Dead franchise from what you've seen. And I'm going to start with Ren Ren Ben first. Okay. So I've been thinking about this since, since uh, you posed this question to us earlier. I was like, okay, what, how would I rank it? So I would rank Army of Darkness first. Uh, then I would go uh, Ash versus Evil Dead because I have watched that series multiple multiple times and i love it and i'm very sad that we will probably never get a fourth season um so let's see i said army of darkness ash versus evil dead uh i would actually say evil dead rise um then i would say evil dead 2 uh the evil dead and then um the 2013 remake i don't know why i kept saying 2010 but yeah so that would be my ranking Um, uh, I would say, all right, this is kind of hard for me. I'm gonna do best to worst. I'll say the first, no, not the first Evil Dead. Evil Dead 2 is, is one of my all time favorites, followed up by the first one. I, I feel that's a good start. And then I would put the remake under the first one because I, I think it's a pretty damn good movie as well as army of darkness and evil dead rise at the bottom but all all the films are great films i'm just ranking them on pure enjoyment level uh because 
I, I feel like the most exciting one, in my opinion, is Evil Dead 2 with how they handle the formula and everything, uh, going back and forth and the lore and the story and everything. But all of these movies are good movies, no matter what's at the bottom. Next up is Brandon. Where would you rank the Evil Dead films or what you've seen? Uh, this might be controversial, but uh, you know what? All right, let's go. Uh, number one would be um, Evil Dead 4 or 2013. I don't know why, but that's a movie that I, I honestly enjoy watching the most, and I can revisit because it's essentially doing what one did, but with you know a better budget, right? Right? It just doesn't have the same character, like um, with Bruce um Campbell. I'm about to say, well, it's <laughs> oops, but Bruce Campbell when not right though. But for what it did, it just took what um what the first one did and just made it better for me, right? Second one was it's a constant kind of a toss up. So it's either gonna be Evil Dead Rise or Evil Dead Two. So those two movies are interchangeable as far as two and three is concerned. So make it out you will. But I guess just for the sake of this podcast, I will put Rise at number two and um two at um number um three. Now the next one, I'm actually gonna put Army of Darkness. That movie itself is fucking um fantastic. But I think it's more so like if I if you didn't tell me this was Evil Dead, I would have thought it was something else, you know. And that's that's the um, vibe I got from it, right? Now honestly, they could have made a whole new series out of Army of Darkness with the whole uh, medieval self, and I thought it was pretty great though. But personally, I prefer the more uh, the formula we got we had consistently. That's not from Army of Darkness, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not a bad movie, but it's. it's Still, it's still a fantastic movie, though. Just not what I necessarily would want out of future Evil Dead films, personally. But uh, anyway, yeah. The, and the last one would be um the first movie because uh, again, it's not necessarily a bad movie, but you know, it is a product of its time. It, it, it ages pretty poorly. I'm not gonna front about that, right? And you no, know, it's the first one. It's a step of stone. It set the formula, whatever, right? But it's still a good movie. Now, as far as the TV show, I have not seen it to completion. I only seen a few episodes of season one, so I won't judge it fully. So I'm going to exclude that from my list. What about you, Brian? Where would you rank the Evil Dead franchise from what you've seen? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, for me, it's as a whole, the entire list between the shows and the movies is pretty difficult. Going by the movies, um, Two and Army of Darkness rank pretty high, like like first and second. Though it's hard to hard to definitively uh, say which one I would put first. Um, one, you know, it's about like what Brandon said. It is it is for me. It was an enjoyable movie, but all things considered, it's like you know, whatever market left, it got exceeded by the second movie. The 2013 movie I thought was pretty interesting because it put me in mind of thinking that it was going to be very typical at first but it turned out to not be the case especially considering that the number one helpless person in that movie would wind up being the final survivor and not only that her getting possessed but then getting freed with one of the methods you can free somebody from a deadite was actually wild and it gave us a chance to like really see this demon as his own thing um the tv show i thought was it was crazy but i really enjoyed it but where i would rank it is difficult so i'd have to put that more of a question mark evil dead rise from what i from what i remember seeing was good but i would have to rewatch it again but it really is difficult ranking most of this stuff as far as what I liked and I did, like I'd have to like sit down and binge all of it together. It's not like Scream where it was a lot more clear cut. It's like, in my opinion, <laughs> most of these movies was really, really good. So it was super hard for me. I had to go on enjoyment alone. Uh, but Drill, what about you? Where would you rank the Evil Dead franchise? Drill, and I think Drill is still dead. 
All right. Well, I guess unless he comes back for outros, we're going to end this podcast. We had a pretty good time on this podcast, all things considered. So I'm going to do outros until then. So where can we find you, Brian? Oh, wait. There he is. Thrill. Sorry. Crash. Crash happened. Oh, you crash. Yeah, we were about to do outros on the last question, but um, we need you to answer question number eight. So how would you rank the franchise? Oof. Well, this is a tough one, but I would say still Army of Darkness is still the best one for me, mainly because they're mainly because it's such a fun film to watch and there's a ton of great effects and Ash is a great character. Obviously, the second one would be Evil Dead 2. I mean, it basically improves on all the best parts of Evil Dead 1, but still in, injects a, a lot of funny moments in it. And then after that, I mean, after that, I would probably say, it's hard to say, but maybe like Evil Dead Rise, mainly because it did like change up things somewhat. And then Evil Dead 2013 and the, and finally like the original Evil Dead, like Brandon said, it hasn't aged the best, but it was the first film. And I haven't seen all of Ash vs. Evil Dead, but I really, but I did like what I watched, at least the first season. I still need to watch the other two seasons, so it'll probably have to be unranked for now. All right, so it is outro time. Uh, so, Drill, where can we find you on social media? Yeah, on Twitter's Twitter. Still not calling it X. Drill bit seven seven seven. Brandon, where can we find you on social media? You can find me on X videos at Immortal you Brando. Know, my link. This <laughs> okay, you can find me on Twitter at um Twitter X, whatever the fuck Elon want to call it. Uh, you can find my link tree about my other affiliations and whatnot, and yeah, everybody else is now you got them business. Brian, where can we find you on social media? Usually affiliated with the church because I'm not trying to get possessed by a deadite. It's a little late for that, man. Yeah, but, uh, on you. Anyway, um, you can just find me on Twitter, aka X, aka the Cesspit, as same name as same name as my screen name, Silver Angel. But uh, yeah, mostly in church. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's, he's in the church twerking on a dead eye. I got it. Uh, Rem Rem Ben, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch as Ren Ren Ben, or you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, all the social medias as Ren Ren Ben, except for TikTok, where um, I screwed up my own name and I'm Ren Ren Ben Ben on there. And you can find me on X at Ren Operative underscore. You can find me on Pornhub at Renegade Operative, uh, where I'll be doing some serious details uh, with Mama Deadite. But uh, you can find me on YouTube, Renegade Operative. Uh, I'm just going to be mostly trying to work on this pod and maybe Red Dead because I'm a little bit behind on that. And that was also pretty good. Uh, so look forward to that as well as I'm thinking about doing some more MCU stuff. So I might do a review of Captain America Winter Soldier. And that's going to be fun since there's a lot of Captain America hype recently. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit more of that. And that's probably going to be about it for me. So uh, this is the end of this podcast. Hopefully people out there really enjoyed it. Had fun with it, with our Evil Dead knowledge. And we'll be back at it again with another pod uh, relatively in the future. When we talk about Wesker. Uh, so this is the IS signing out. Hopefully you guys have a good day and take care of yourselves. Peace. Bye, bitch. <laughs> I no got I got that on there. I got by bitch on there. <laughs> Ooh.